Kittle. All right, every, everyone. George everyone. Kittle is fucking worse. You are the worst at these things. For 30 seconds in. I also everyone. said Ayuk, and no one listens to me. Everyone's pointing fingers. All right, it's uh, <laughs> October 4th, Pick Central, brought to you by our friends at Fireball. Uh, All right, here we go. Fireball. Sometimes life can get serious fast and adult responsibilities become overwhelming, but everyone needs an excuse to let loose and have some fun. During those moments of stressful adulting and letting yourself have fun, Fireball Whiskey is there to help you say F it and free your fire. Fireball takes any event to the next level, whether it's a mundane work happy hour, a crazy pregame, or just watching football with some friends. Fireball is all about flipping the script on life and turning everyday events into ones you'll be telling stories about for years. Fireball's iconic cinnamon flavor Tastes fire and goes down easy, making it the ultimate crowd pleaser. That's why it's the number one shot in the U.S. Fireball 50 milliliter shooters are perfect to ignite a pregame, tailgate, or darty. Plus, no shot glass needed. Just crack it and knock it back. Uh, Ev, how many little dart, uh, little shots got into uh, ten, um, Tennessee a couple weeks ago? Oh, quite a few. Quite a few, right? Quite a few. All right. Big win. Next time you're deciding between adulting and fun, say F it and free your fire with an ice cold shot. Of fireball. All right. Parlay does not hit. You can't win them all. I have <laughs> I have a lot of thoughts. You can only this. win a piece of what we did the first time. So we're getting- I have a lot of thoughts because I think no, we got to stop coming in here like saying, oh, maybe this, maybe that. Everyone has a pick. We say yes or no, and that's it. I think the – I think the, the, the most confident – pick we had last night was 49ers money line and we didn't take it the 49ers <laughs> 49ers yeah but that's just like and we even talk about like cooper cup always hits his like over i said it like, yeah. oh, i said it right, that's a problem though because we go we talk for 20 minutes so everyone says something but everybody bring one in cooper cup so really was Mondays so and thursdays we're gonna have the parlay okay for us. I, lo- I love the idea and yeah. great 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 on ev for debo the fireball pick <laughs> fucking the guy with touchdown scores yeah. is crazy. Three for three. It wasn't an easy one either. Yeah, I know. Higby hit his yards. And, he almost scored and, a second one, we, too. We, we all had good feels, but it was, it was too many cooks around the pot. It got a little. It, it has to be simple. It's yeah. You bring it in, and then it's majority votes. If majority says yes. Like everybody bring one? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Also, yeah. we don't need to get and to five legs. I think we can. Yeah, I think. Oh, so. we, can we, can hit a, we can hit a I'd say two or three legs. Three, legs three to four. I, I say this. I say bring bring your pick. And then, like, quietly have your confidence level with it as well. Hmm? And, and pitch your case for it. Pretty much. And right. B- Booze kind of had a thing, though. I think we just – maybe we just blindly the beginning leg is the field goals. I think it depends, like, on, just the, depends become, on the game, depends on the team. Yeah, fair enough. We just yeah. become a field goal show. Like, well, field goals, I mean, when you think about it, the, the, the field goals, every single time we've done the parlay one. plus for, for pick central, the field goals over his hit. Yeah, but now it's due not to hit. Yeah. I mean, we can like look at a game, game to game. Like, we'll see. Like, game like, to like game. A lower scoring game is better for field goal. Yeah. We have a, we have a maybe a field goal game on Thursday with Colts Broncos. Who's oh, the game? That's all field. Goal. Oh my God! I'm Russ so is a little banged. Bang. Russ is a little banged up. I am so in love with the Colts. We should. We'll is Taylor banged up too? Yeah, ankle a little bit. Yeah. That game. I don't want to watch week. that game. I really don't. That game we should take off. Like just no one watch it. We'll just want just one no TD bet. We just go no TDs. That's such a game where both of these teams need to win. Broncos are to have are like Broncos at two and two are in way better shape than they deserve to be. Yeah, the, the yeah. You know, like it's like one of those teams you look at them and you're like, how the hell are they two and two? Exactly. And they pull you know ugly wins against Houston and the Niners at home. Yeah, I think the Broncos are actually frauds, and I yeah. think the Colts are underachieving. Yeah, the Colts passing game is very weak, though. I don't know. It's a Pittman's good, but like the rest of it's, I don't know. It's kind of underwhelming. Colts so, kicker is bad. So what do you make? Because we you kind of said it. Last night, too, right? So, what do you make of, in terms of contenders, now in the NFC? The Rams are probably still in the picture. Of course. But of course, is it now clear-cut Packers, Eagles, and that's it? I think so, because the Rams, honestly, they Or in terms not, of tier, not content, but like tiers. Tier one, is it Packers, Eagles, and that's it? I didn't I think it's starting to shape that Rams way. last night were like, they're missing. It can't just be Cooper Cup. It just can't. No, it, it, that's the problem. And I saw that that week one against Buffalo too. Allen Robinson is like big, but he right. doesn't separate. No, he doesn't separate. He's not fast. Well, he not only does he separate. Matt Stafford wasn't even looking to his side. Didn't even look. 
didn't Cooley, even look. Cooley had one of the funniest tweets. He goes, I swear to God, Allen Robinson got uh, sh- a foot shorter when he put the Rams jersey on. Really, it's he crazy. A lot he does shorter. not look big, yeah. No. I agree. He looks so but, much taller on the, on the he, Bears. They can't – Cooper Cup, yeah, he's going to get his yards, but he can't do everything. It's it's the Rams are missing something, and it might be Odell. Right, well, Robert right. Woods used to be that. Woods, yeah. Before he tore his ACL, and then Odell replaced it. But that second uh, that Odell, second playmaker. Odell might come back. No, no, he's going to the Giants with Landon Collins. But credit to the 49ers, they shoved their shit in a little bit. Well, no, I, I'm I'm still play. on the nine. I've never really left the Niners. I'm still, I'm still a believer they could like be a Super Bowl team. I really believe it's that. It's going to ride. It's going to ride or die with Garoppolo. Well, that's the guy who's sitting pretty. Is yeah. I mean, Garoppolo's. I thought he played pretty good. Last more and more successful. He, play, he played good enough to win, which is what he does. What he does. And I then the week before, played, like, the week he, week before, he played bad enough to lose. Sure. Right. How sure. about how about Nick Bosa? Holy freaking! Pass rush was great. I mean, dude, I he's mean, got. Did you see the stats? He's gotten pressure on like 29 percent of dropbacks. It's one of the craziest damn stats I've ever heard in my entire life. The other far this year, well, I think the Rams have three, like the three, I'm, and I mentioned it um, a couple of times. Like the only time the Niners have beat or the Rams beat the Niners in the last like four or five years, basically with these Jesus. semblance of players, is they had Von Miller, they had Odell, and Whitworth. They don't have those guys anymore. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. The three big pieces. Whitworth is a big leader. Too. There's been he's been called against, like people have committed a holding penalty on him 163 times. That's in his career. Right? I know, I know, but that's cra- like that's cra- a lot. It's crazy. He's only been in the league for like a few. He years. can't beat you. I know. He's been injured prone a little bit too. It's just better. It's one that, that, that's actually an absurd stat. He's been in the league for what three years? Yeah, uh, a little more than four. I think this is fourth year. Maybe. Okay, okay. Let's say it's five. Maybe not even. Let's say it's five years. Sixteen games, five, seventeen five, games five. in a year. Two hundred sixty-five. That's two, two to three. three yeah, like two, over two. Honestly, games. I, got, I thought he got held a few times last night. and didn't get called. That's yeah. absurd. I respect that they didn't call penalties last night. I kind of like. Probably gets hold, held every time because you can't. You can't stop. It's it. Just a matter of how many times it gets called. So yeah, so almost like a, held a hundred. There's no way they have a hundred. I'm, I'm going to guess that's bait. I don't know who's who's keeping track. Yeah, I, was gonna yeah, say, I just had like a no stat. Stat. There, There's yeah, no okay. way. I'm going to guess that. Oh, think about it like this. There, he has not played even half of 163 games in his career. Didn't he miss, think he's he gonna miss co- the whole season, did he not? Yeah, but holding penalties He's only played like not, 40 games his whole NFL career. F- yeah, five holding penalties against the team is not outlandish. Against the same person in a no, same no, no, game? No, 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 no. Five holding penalties against the whole team. So if he's getting... I guess, yeah, if he's getting 20% there is one of those. No, there is five holding penalties is a lot in a game against all of them. holds against him five. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. I'm, who I'm, tweeted I'm, that? I don't know. Let's, we let's throw go, a challenge. Let's, who the fuck? That's a crazy stat well, to Unless also they're going to like deep PFF. Uh, I don't even, even if they went deep uh, PFF where it's like he was held 163 times. They didn't call but it. They didn't call it. No way. <laughs> no way. That's an outrageous stat. It's wild. It's so fake. Like that's the thing that jumped out to me. No obviously, way. that's we'll we'll throw a challenge flag on that. We'll see how that one goes. So the other thing too is the um, 49ers had it without Trent Williams. Oh, they're keeping Kittle in the block a little bit. Yeah, for sure. Which we didn't talk about that. It was yesterday. too late, but it wasn't too late for me to put it in. He's a big he present. Saying that, I was hey, like, he, I he, he started to come alive in the second half. It. Shouldn't even told me. But it was yeah. one of those I thought about it like six thirty. Makes I was sense. Because like, we were we were actually in my, in my fantasy group chat. We were talking about it, and I and I and that was when I thought about it. And I was like, oh, because some we, some we put together like a parlay in my group chat. Some kids come. Some kids will. And I thought about it. and I was like, Did oh, that hit? fuck no. Uh, if they had it, we'll get them on the show. No, I have a, I have a I quick like, question oh, for you guys. Yeah, you were on um, the Niners last night. Yeah, I was on the Niners. Well, my bad. I don't want to hurt you. No, no. Well, I was just curious. Um, where we are right now? I know they got their Super Bowl with their guy, but you think the Rams would rather have Goff right now? Hell no. 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 Hell no. no. He's playing out of his mind. Absolutely not. They'd Absolutely be more, not. They'd definitely be more entertaining. I think the Seahawks might be thrilled about having Geno over Russ, though. If they want, yeah. if, <laughs> if the Rams wanted to be in the not that bad rankings, they would want golf. That's what they would like. But it's it is there is an element too of like the Rams kind of. I don't want to say. I guess it's fair to say they kind of bought the title, right? They brought in a lot of free agent acquisitions. But that's ever. Yeah, I, I they win like it like it, like I don't know. Who cares? Who cares how yeah. you get it? No, no, no. That's fine. <laughs> But I don't know if the drive is that, like with the Patriots, right, um, and the Packers who have always been in the mix, the Steelers when they were always in AFC, Fair. you know, the Eagles. Like I you get guys, what you're saying. That's what I'm saying. The, the J- L.A. culture on that. The, dri- the drive, drive of Gary like Donald out of retirement. Right. The drive of like fuck you, no, no, no. Like we're be- like it's a pride thing. The Eagles had it back in the day when they would go to NFC championships. The Patriots definitely had it. Yeah. Um, the Packers definitely had it. I don't know if the Rams have it. I get, I, I get exactly. I mean, shit, Stafford's been there for a fucking – this is his second year, too. You know what I mean? Would like, you call the 
Bills buying their Super Bowl if they won this year? No. No. Why? Because what, they, dra- the, they, they drafted, drafted Josh Allen. Allen. Okay. They literally added just Von Miller. But, well, and they, and they added Miller, Diggs last year. They added Diggs. Like, that's kind of what the, Ram, like the Rams just add. Like, they traded for Stafford. Like, yeah, but know. the quarterback, the, when you have the quarterback, you're not No, I, I don't say I agree with what, I, what I'm saying. Just more like who – you, you, can ta- you can tattoo that etch that fucking phrase on your tombstone. What? I don't necessarily agree with what I'm no, saying. Oh, that's just a conversation. <laughs> I agree with everything. You're, I'm you're bracing debate. Yeah, I agree yeah. with everything I'm saying. You you never believe anything you're saying. Agreed. I, I, saw, <laughs> hey, I did see a blog on you. I have uh, no confidence. I did see a blog on you uh, having a hard time with the Mayfield thing. Did yeah, I, uh, I took. I'm taking two weeks off. He has to prove his loyalty to me because I, I agree with that. His uh, his one thing really set me off this week of when someone said, I uh, asked him like, "Oh, did you hear everyone booing you?" And he said. I don't. Uh, I did hear him, and what did we do right after that? We scored a touchdown. They scored a touchdown to go down ten with four minutes left in the game. So I was like, dude, just just say oh, it doesn't bother me. Like, just gotta get just it's gotta lie. Get yeah, yeah, yeah. Shout lie. out and shout out to Mincy for reading blogs on BarstoolSports.com. For what? For oh, reading, reading, or reading or the blog. Yeah, 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 yeah. Supporting the program. Exactly. That's what we like to see. Exactly. Number, shout out Mince. No, uh, what blog are you looking at right here? Oh. Uh. Also, I think you, I wrote seven last week. That was good for me. Nice. We're getting, getting better. <laughs> did a quick fact check. Nick Bosa has played 39 NFL games. There's no way he's been. That, that would mean he gets held over four times. That, that can't be real. <laughs> That's impossible. That, that must be considered a fact. Even our stack guy is finding fucking crumbs in the. Well, this, uh, who the six sacks of the season was correct? No, that's that. easy. The pressures of the season were correct. Yes. That's easy to track. Like that that, that if that stat is real, he's the most he's the most dangerous <laughs> so defensive player ever. No, too. I think I, I I think that stat kind of holds some water. I mean, if you watch an NFL game, there's a holding call every single fucking play that goes off, and there's 75 snaps on average. In a game, it's no, not crazy. Call, your top I, defensive I mean, guy yeah, you're for your top saying, defensive Zaz, guy. It's not saying, crazy for yeah. him to get oh, five so, holds in a game, but, seventy-five but, snaps. No, no, but um, but on him specifically, yeah, yeah if he's elite, get. he's your elite pass rusher. They're not throwing four holds a game. His whole career. that's absurd. That's half a football field a game that it's they're four giving point. Up. It's four point one seven per game. Like that's cr- on one player. That's crazy. That is that's seventy-five that, snaps in a game. It's where it gets tough. I don't know. I I throw the challenge. No, out. That would that would have been sniffed out as a stat, like an unbelievable thing, way before now. If that was the case, if he was getting held twice, two times a game, even even like a PFF think, thing where it's like the whole they didn't call it, I still would be like, I don't no think way. Anyone keeps the stat? I didn't know they did. Can't even check it because no one keeps the That's stat. That's crazy. Um, also, my main point on that on that whole holding thing is everyone in the chat has to like the stream right now. Yes. 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 And Agreed. subscribe Bump to the Barstool up. Sports Please. Bookie Tip. Like, Bump us up. free. Just click. Click. Bump us up. Can I get my minute real fast? Yes. Because they'll transition to college. Cause, uh, yeah, because I want to get to the NFL. Unless you go to Mars. But. Oh, we got we to gotta talk about the big story last night, but go ahead. <laughs> Sorry, didn't mean you to go first, no, You could go first if you want. No, 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 no. All right. No, 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 no. All right. It's graphics on the board. All right. We ready? It's on the clock. All right. I think the Dallas Cowboys should trade Dak Prescott. I think the Dallas Cowboys should trade Dak Prescott. He is holding the team back. Cooper Rush is doing enough to this. The team around him is very fucking good. And Dak is what happens when they plays? They don't play as well when Cooper Rush is going in there and managing this game. They need a game manager who isn't going to turn the ball over and fumble and be a piece of shit in there. I think Dak, they can get a lot back from for Dak Prescott as well because people are still high on him and make this team even better around Cooper Rush. I'm not saying you even got to keep Cooper Rush. You need a, um, a, a quarterback that can manage this team well. And I think they should trade Dak Prescott. Because you like their de- their defense is so good. Defense is so good. You could add to that. Real courageous when Dak Prescott's number one Balkuzi boy is in here to defend him. I, I, I would love to even tell him that because also think about Dak has had weapons too. Zeke and his prime. Look, I, I, I don't I don't actually disagree with that take. I don't. Yeah. I said it yesterday that they they are playing better with Cooper Rush, a more game manager. But I I don't I don't know how you sell that. Maybe if you have it's a somebody, stars league, maybe, that's what yeah. I'm maybe talking. if you have somebody oh, better than Cooper Rush there, and that's what I wanted to make note. I don't say, think they should keep just like Cooper Rush as their franchise quarterback. You're saying Dak's not I mean, in for Dak 35 or 40 million a year. Yeah. For is what not it for, that. for what right. they're paying? Yes, I get what you're saying. It makes sense. I mean, it's it's definitely right. like. 
passable if it starts to get f- no. float that just, theory. I, I, I don't I don't see how you it's I don't a wild see you theory, the but as a, as a giant, change your identity. I'll put it like this: as a Giants fan, I would love it if they did that. I'm just saying. He's had a very, very, very good team around him. Surrounding, but, but the, the team this year, I think it's they won I the think, division last year. It, they won the division. Listen, they, they, yeah, they, but that's just because they it was anyone could have won. And the three games that the I, honestly have won have last not been year against was, World Beat. I'm sorry, the, the Cowboys uh, have won and not been against World Beat. That's what I was gonna say. They, I mean, they beat the they Bengals beat, they beat the Giants. They beat the um, Bengals was a good win, but they just beat the, they beat the Commanders who are awful. They beat the Bengals. They beat the Giants. Bengals was a solid win. In the first week, they played they played the Bucks. Bengals I mean, was a solid win, but it was also kind of a fluke win. That's what I'm saying. I, I mean, defense won. So Cooper Rush is Cooper Rush. Listen, he just made a lifetime career in the NFL. You will. Oh, uh, oh of yeah. course, of course. You I'm will saying, see. Like Doc, but I'm saying the offense, the potential with the offense, is so significantly higher with Dak at quarterback. I mean, it's like a no, it's a no brainer to me. I don't. The defense is like, stepping up because Dak is. Out. I also think the defense is that good. Like I think yeah. the, the the their pass rush is unbelievable. You will tell every you will see everything you need to know about the Cowboys this year when they play the Eagles in two weeks prime time. Yeah, that's fair. That'll be a good one to watch. I mean, like the, the Marcus uh, Lawrence and fucking and Parsons so is insane. good, bro. Insane so good. combo on the edges. Can we put that a uh, check on the Mush Minute, please. That was a good one. Wasn't bad. Well, well <laughs> I'm curious what Smitty is about to say. What's the biggest? Uh, the Philadelphia Phillies ended their 11 plus year postseason drought last night with a wild card birth. Congratu- birth. Congratulations to the Phillies and congratulations to the Mets on their wild card birth as well. It's uh, tough to make the postseason. Uh, yes. and, and the Phillies, unlike uh, whiny Mets fans all year who complain about other teams not beating the Braves instead of just winning themselves. They went out last night. They took care of their dirty laundry. Aaron Noah pitched six perfect innings. I, I thought he was going to have a perfect game at some point. It ended six and two-thirds. Shut out. Three-nothing performance. Kyle Schwarber, two bombs. Bryce Harper hit. Gene Segura is the longest tenured uh, or has played the most games in Major League Baseball without hitting the postseason. Number two, JT Ramuto. Zach Wheeler and Aaron, Ro- and Aaron Noah are two and three on that list for starting pitchers. This team deserves to be in the playoffs. They started 22 and 29. Amazing run by Philly Rob Thompson. The city of Philadelphia deserves it. They might not be able to see a home game in South Philly this season, but it's a great turnaround. Make playing? Philly Rob. What was that? Are they going to be playing? It actually depends. Right now they're playing the Cardinals, and we'll get in the bets later. Hammer the Astros tonight. The Phillies went out, yeah. got hammered last got night. The they're playing the Verlander tonight. Yeah. They Verlander, don't want yeah. to win. Verlander will lock up the, the Mets. Cy Young. One final like cat, yeah. uh, tap, cap tip to you know the fans. I mean, hey, I mean, hammer the Astros and Phillies under two and a half runs total tonight. Questions. Does Thompson get the full time job? He, he has to. You think so? Yeah, he's has the to. fourth. I think so. He's he the fourth manager off. in baseball history to take a team who has been under seven games, under 500, any point in the season, and lead them to the postseason. Yeah. Granted, agreed. The third new wild card berth. Like if this was la- if this was two years ago or before, they wouldn't yeah, have it. Don't Fuck it. Fuck it. I don't care. You can only play in the new format. You I mean, don't have that, to apologize. Yeah. You don't have to apologize to anybody. That's it's a new format. No. N- NL East, NAL East, fucking three teams each. Incredible in the playoffs. And I will say this: Braves, Mets. I, I I'll be honest. It's going to be a tough if if the Phillies face them. Their ERA is like six. They, they've been you know ball washed by them all year. Cardinals ERA is under three. They match up pretty damn well oh. against the Cardinals. Yeah, no, that's not a that's a good series. Yeah, well. that's very one that series. Yeah. That's definitely Let's see what happens. Do you guys like the new playoffs? It's interesting. I'm, I'm interested to see it play out first, but yeah, I kind of like out. it. I think it's I, th- I think it's extremely top heavy, which I for w- winnableness for the one and two seeds with the bye, which I don't necessarily sure. disagree with. You play 162 games, you get that bye, you deserve it. Mm-hmm. The yeah. question that, the question I have to you though, so hard for a while. You're, you're one game behind. Yes, the Padres? the Padres. Who do you want? You want the Cardinals? Or you want the Mets? <laughs> Well, we just explained it with the Cardinals. Not even close. Okay. Not even close. No, it's fine. Content wise, yeah, Mets. Yeah, like, Phillies Mets some... content wise would be, oh, yeah, would be but, but it's it's night and day yeah. with, with who they match up with better. Right. Yeah, but they at least know they like know them. I don't know. I, I guess either well, I'd rather well, what, Cardinals. What, uh, too, what but... KFC was saying yesterday was he was saying how the Padres just killed the Mets and the Mets kind of killed the Phillies, but he still was like I'd rather play the Padres because you just uh, know them too much. You think? I, I was kind of I, I like I understood what he was saying, but also didn't understand where. <laughs> I think more like I I I think you'd rather match up with a team that you play well against. Yeah, especially when you know you're going to be at home regardless of the. I outcome. guess I'm trying to say it as like 
would you rather play the Guardians or the Rays? And it's like the Rays, we know we've had, but pretty, we've beaten them. But we beat them the, out. But I'd say I'd rather play the Guardians. Like we yeah, I, I, Guardians. I'm just trying to put it in play. Like I know what the Rays are. I'm kind of sick of them. Like I'd rather just beat up on the Guardians. You know, I don't know. I guess That's just, I see, no, the Rays are designed, beat up on the Guardians. Sick, no, they're designed to be a pain in the ass in the postseason. Yeah, look, the Rays are. No, I don't want to out. The people talk about the Guardians like they're kind of trash because they play in a trash division. They have over 90 wins this year. Their bullpen is no, no, no. I, it's it's not. It just as a Yankee, there's just like a mental. We just like oh. Always beat them. Yeah. Well, uh, playoffs we beat them. The twins, yes. The the Guardians. No, 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 you you beat the the team known as uh, the Native Americans. You did not beat the Guardians. Fair enough. We beat Cleveland. <laughs> yeah. Everybody beats Cleveland. All right. <laughs> we got gonna get. Yeah. Them. Give us Skrill. Yeah. So Skrill is the perfect digital wallet for sports betters. Create your free account at skrillcom slash barstool. Coming soon to the Barstool Sportsbook, Skrill is a digital wallet perfect for gamblers. Skrill is for money movers and makers, allowing you to instantly deposit and withdraw your money. Sophisticated gamblers, such as all these elite geniuses in this room, use Skrill to manage their bankroll, whether they are playing games like poker or betting on their favorite sports. It's one of the safest and most secure digital wallets, and once it's part of the Barstool Sportsbook, you'll be able to deposit and withdraw instantly with no limits. Skrill also lets you transfer money to another Skrill member and take advantage of some of the best money transfer rates around, which actually is a huge benefit in gambling. So make sure to sign up at Skrill.com slash Barstool to create your free account and complete the account verification by clicking follow the game after registering so you can start using the Skrill Digital Wallet today. Can I have 30 seconds to a minute on Ole Miss? Yes. No, no, we're getting into college now, okay. so obviously, yeah. Um, that do you what did you think Ole Miss could have scooped and scored that for the cover? I don't know. I don't think he would have went all the way. All the way, right? That's just there was, a, there was a moment when it happened when I thought when I was like scoop it and then there was guys right there. It was a I believe it was a defensive lineman, if I'm yeah. not mistaken. I don't think he goes like no, Ole 70 Ole yards. Ole Miss screwed themselves. They went for that fourth and goal at the three and didn't get it. And Lane, that was a very – I know Lane's always super aggressive, and I get it. He's trying to put the game away. Like, that was actually a spot where I probably kicked the field goal with the way the defense was playing. I didn't feel great about the fourth and goal at the three or the four. But I get, like, that aggressive mindset. I love the players. Love it. Uh, I thought the defensive effort was spectacular. Honestly, Ole Miss got away with one. That same – so – that same Kentucky kicker, that was the guy who missed the extra point that got me to Barstool two years ago, that Ruffalo. Oh, and then he came out and left, what, five, six points on the board, two extra points, a field goal. Uh, that loomed really large. Credit to the Ole Miss defense, two, forcing two turnovers in the red zone. I know Dave tweeted out that that should have been targeting, and a lot of people thought that on the first fumble by Will Levis when he got lit up uh, with four minutes left. But honestly, Lane Kiffin said it. Kind of got away with one getting into the locker room. I mean, Ole Misses did score three points in the second half. Uh, but, you know, that's part of, you know, you build a culture where you know how to pull out those close games. I mean, my whole life as an Ole Miss fan, close games like that, you believe you're going to screw it up. And now Lane's changed that culture. Ole Miss hadn't lost a home game since 2020. Ole Miss is 15-2 and in their last 17 regular season games. That's unreal. Yeah, it was interesting because we didn't know much about Ole Miss going into that game. Well, they just they they, they hadn't hand, played they, it. They'd handle business. They'd yeah, right. yeah. Yeah. the shit out of the teams they were supposed to. It was keep, four games of preseason. Yeah, and they, is but, what it was. But it was like they never had a real like. My thought with Kentucky going into the game was they had played like the Miami Ohio's and they had played some of these like MAC teams where they kind of had these, not like they didn't look special or spectacular in those games where Ole Miss had at least like went out and beat Georgia Tech by like forty. Actually, just beat Pitt. They went out and beat the the teams they played. They were smoking them, so at least that gave me a little more confidence. But. Next couple, they, they run the ball well. They, uh, Kentucky made good adjustments in the second half, stopping it. But I mean, they were running all over them in the first half. Yeah. Well, so the things looking ahead, real quick, on the Ole Miss front at Vandy this week, gotta feel good about that. Auburn at home the week after, feel yep. pretty good about that. I mean, I you know, it's one week at a time, but I don't play for the team, so I can say whatever. Possibility of seven and zero in the college football shows in Baton Rouge. Wow. That would wow. be. That would be. On fire in Baton Rouge, if LSU, but you know all LSU fans. And speaking the real, I, I know we're getting super early. Like, thinking about that just sparked me for the thought of the game this Saturday. What a rat line for Tennessee! Oh yeah, God! No, so look, I don't know what to do. So five upsets. Like, it, taking taking LSU makes me want to puke, and I, I, I that's been a state of have for a while. That I, that's kind of what I love to do, but that one scares the shit. It definitely does. That's the next part. I'm just, I just do not for think sure. LSU is very good. Five upsets. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, five upsets last week of unranked teams uh, over ranked teams. Which one was the most shocking to you, or who who lost the most in a loss? So you have UCLA, forty to thirty-two, which 
I say that one's the least. Like yeah. UCLA is good. I was on that. I, I was all over that. Yeah, I I had the over. I was all over. I was UCLA. big on. I were holding uh, ten to one. To yeah, win yeah. It's gonna be, they got a shot. They definitely have a shot. Huge game this week. Definitely have a shot. U- yeah. Utah going to UCLA. That's big a one. That's probably the biggest game of the, the week. The fact that they got him, I don't think they can win at Utah. Utah's a tough place to win, but at UCLA, I think that's exactly. Like, sure. I've been the Utah rider. That game that scares me. Probably that game scares me more than than USC coming to Utah. Yeah, I agree with that. Like going, I think that's gonna be a great game. I think that's the game of the weekend. Honestly, I really do. You think Chip gets picked up after this year? I feel like he's kind of settled in there. I don't know. I don't know though. I think thought he, he was leaving after. I mean, he just like loves going to the Pac-10, kind of hiding. I just think this is like the first year where he's actually. We'll see what happens this week and going on, but this is kind of the first year he's like really put his team together and they're playing really well. I thought they, they were. Like, like, I thought they were good last year though. They were, they were no. They were solid. They, they lost were solid. like three games at the very end. You know, they lost. They they were eight and four and they lost a bunch of close. Like games. what? What if say some way somehow Notre Dame comes open and they offer it to Chip Kelly? I just think you can't like that brand of football. I just don't know if it. I mean, he's changed it a little bit. It's not totally this UCLA offense isn't totally what like it was in Oregon, mm-hmm. but I don't know. Yeah, also, but you talk about an electric quarterback, like the guys he's had. Dude, under DTR is him. awesome. I know, but and, awesome. and Chip has done that with his guys at Oregon. Like, look at like so Dennis much, Dixon. Yes, how much money? I don't know if he was there yeah. back then. No, he was. Dennis Dixon. Yeah, he played under Chip. Did he? Yeah, because then like Darren Eagles, Thomas and the Eagles Dixon, brought him he in. Had the because, end. He had Mariota one year and then he left. Right? Dixon was like 07. You sure? Dixon was he was he was early. The Eagles brought him in because he played under Chip Kelly. I thought. Okay, that's. We'll see. He was electric though. I don't know if Chip That's was great. was there back then, but either way, like you told me, so, so, so 2007, Chip was OC. He was OC yeah, under body, under year. Mike Body. Got it. That's what he was. He wasn't. I was like, Dixon might have won the Heisman that year if he didn't yeah. get hurt. Yes, he would have, and they would have won the national championship or been in it. Um, do you, real fast. Sorry, this breaking news: just Tom Brady and Giselle both fi- uh, hired uh, divorce lawyers. What? Do you think he's going to play till sixty now if he gets divorced? Yes. Yeah. Wow. Really? So anything holding yeah. him back? That really? Ha- wow. Yeah. Well, he's got the TV money. Doesn't matter. Yeah. Waiting. He's got plenty of money. He don't. So all right. So not an upset, but a close one. Georgia beats Missouri twenty six twenty two in a in a fucking wild one. Was Georgia the biggest loser in that? You got TCU boat racing Oklahoma fifty five twenty four. Purdue twenty Minnesota ten. That makes PJ Fleck. Thank God I didn't bet on him and he covered for me last the week before. But PJ, that's so Minnesota. Yeah, I, I love. I, I was on Purdue. I was on said, Purdue. Huge all week. The minute I asked Ev, are you worried about Minnesota potentially on that side? Like what percent? I was expecting you know five to ten. That's accurate. But he's like, uh, no, not at all. And as soon as we started asking did I say not questions, because I, no, no, I did end up right. I did end up betting Purdue. Well, listen, it might be a moot point. PJ Fleck's not a guarantee to get there. So like that. that as soon as I started putting Minnesota. In the championship game, that was a dumb move. That's what Minnesota. Well, also, in the, on the other end, that was also classic Jeff Brom Purdue. Yeah, in like ten point yeah, dogs. Hundred percent. Everyone yeah. thinks they're bad and then go beat them. That is true. That was exactly what they did last year to Iowa. Iowa, Iowa like Michigan State. Yep. Yeah. Uh, I Probably. think right around the same time for Iowa. Yeah. Like, with Purdue, uh, Georgia Tech twenty six. Pit twenty one. That's a bad loss. For that's me. a horrible. Oh, horrible. I know Georgia say Tech got rid of the... Jeff Collins, but like we're talking about a Georgia Tech team. I mean. That like that old Miss game, Ole Miss could have won by sixty. Yeah, uh, I mean, to that's, me, that's and even Clemson played like shit in the first half and still beat them by like by beat them by like thirty. To me, to me, Pitt's the biggest loser there. So uh, I think Oklahoma, the Oklahoma. What's happened to Oklahoma? I mean, we got to talk about like just this fall because it's one thing. I mean, I get it. Kansas State always gives them trouble. They lost that game. And it's one thing to lose at TCU when you're a five and a half point favorite, but they got their ass boat raised. I mean, we have 41 yeah. points well, in the first is, 41 points in the first half. Dykes is unbelievable, and that's a good one too. The, I'm on nothing yet. I'll break it all down tonight and, and find the picks for tomorrow when we record. But I think it's a short, short board in terms of what I love. The one I think I'm starting to love, and I know they're on the road, and game day is going there, and Kansas is five and zero. Oh, I think TCU kind of smashes Kansas. Seven and a half. Yeah, it's a t- I've been going back and forth on it all week. I agree with Mincy that it's it's not that they lost; it's the fashion that they lost. Yeah, that's is, my point. Is disturbing to get just destroyed like that. But this is probably other than U- UCLA, uh, Utah. Yeah, I mean, this is, a this big is the other biggest game. Honestly, like, like game day should be going there. Game day is going. Again. They are going to Kansas. All yeah. right, good. They deserve it. They should football school. Yeah, it's crazy. So that's obviously so that's a big one of the line. The, I the one thing I will say I respect about Kent, even though the the game was at home. That they were able to grind out a win, even though I think they should have lost. They were able to grind out a win in a dogfight Iowa State kind of game, a 14-11 game, which all their other games, like the West Virginia shootout, Houston shootout. So I respect they were able to play like a different brand of football and still find a way to win. 
So I don't know. I, it's seven. Like I agree with you. Like the line kind of like stinks a little bit. Like the fact that it's that big for TCU, but they are also coming off a blowout win over Oklahoma, where Kansas looked underwhelming ish. Even they, like I said, they got a win over what I think is a solid football team. I might even be inclined to take Kansas. I, I'm taking Kansas. I, I like really. Kansas. If you're going to give me like if, you, if we get like seven and a half, eight, I think I have to take Kansas. Oh. And I'll, I, and I'll live with the consequences. I think there's a little bit of an element of like uh, – I know Rick Majera sent, said it in his book the first time he went to the Final Four, and he's like, uh, I wish like I wish I knew how much came with this. I think a little bit of that plays into game day as well. Like, Leipold has never been mm. in this type of situation. The place is running high, like, you know, a, more appearances, more media, bigger parties, like the pep rally's bigger. There's a lot of eyeballs now. The players are getting their heads bigger. You know, NIL money, I'm sure, is coming in. Like, I just think Leipold hasn't been through it. And that's not to say Dykes has necessarily been through it, but he's the guy going on the road. He don't have to deal with all that shit, you know? I think when it's your hometown and you're hosting the party, there's a lot more going into it. That's the only thing I would throw out there. That's fair. No, that's fair. I, d- I just think it sets up where the line's inflated because TCU blew Oklahoma out. Yes, I just think I just think it should be. T- I think TCU, overvalue. Spot. I think TCU should be four and a half or five at Kansas. Well, TCU I think seven was and a half or eight yeah. is too much. TCU was a sleeper coming into the to the conference with the Big Twelve. And how about this? If Texas is healthy and Texas turns it around, and what they did to West Virginia they beat the shit out of them, Oklahoma could have three losses before Columbus Day. Yeah, yeah te- speaking of no, Texas, no, no, no. Yeah, well, three conference losses. Texas before. is a seven point favorite Red River, right? That's that's almost one where I almost think it might be the, the chance to buy back in Oklahoma. Yeah. Rivalry game. Venables has to show some problem. Rivalry game getting yeah. seven. Um, this one's a rat. It's crazy. Tennessee minus three on the road at LSU. I said it last week. He didn't cover for me, uh, but he went and got the job done. I think they might have put Brian Kelly in the casket a little too soon. Oh, mm. obviously. Yeah, I, mean, I mean, you're going to improve – like. LSU had 38 guys dress out in the Texas Bowl. You talk about the roster, all the crap that happened the last two years. Oh, all the transfers they had. Daniels came in late. Hell yeah, they're going to improve from weeks one to three and four. The the second half against Mississippi State, they played incredible on D. Yeah, Auburn was up 17 nothing in that game. LSU Auburn's always weird at Auburn. Always, I bet Auburn and covered, but they came back. Even though we got to say this, Jalen Dan- Jay Daniels 80 yards passing. Yeah. That that that's oh, a that's, pro- that's that's a real problem. And that's what I said. I said you know I like the kid. I think he's dynamic, but he ain't gonna. I don't know if he can light up SEC defenses. I mean, he, but Tennessee does not have a great defense. So and the Butte didn't play because his kid was being born. He'll be back. Uh, it's an 11 a.m. game. All the LSU fans are bitching, but it is sold out already. It's gonna rock even though it's 11 a.m. I mean, I'm LSU or pass here. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a plug your nose and play it. I mean, it just the, the number being that low is just shocking. Yeah, it's a rat line. So, uh, the rat, the raddest of rats. I what mean, do you think it crazy. should be six? I, like, I, I wouldn't have been shocked if it was like six or seven. Like, when it went before it opened. I mean, LSU is just not that good, and Tennessee is undefeated. Tennessee's a top ten team, unranked, uh, facing an unranked team on the road, only laying two and a half, three. Like that's smelly. Yeah, yeah. That's smelly. It's, it's bad. It's uh, all right. It's not a look ahead because Tennessee is in a thing where every week. It's a cha- like it's a championship environment for them. They got to get through yeah. all the tests. Going to Death Valley ain't no look ahead. No, it's definitely not a look ahead. But they do have yeah, Bama next week. Honestly, you also, Bama you, on deck. Also, but uh, no, I, yeah. It's a, what do you mean? Yeah, it's a uh, look ahead. Plus, people like especially being there, I really got to have an appreciation for it. Like, or no, they didn't. Oh no, they didn't play uh, Florida last week. But I even think the emotional come down even like that. Like that was such a big win for them too. I don't know. Plus, you're saying going like having Bama the next week. I think there's definitely some look ahead there. I just think the, they're, they're, I mean, they're in a big spot. Or like they're in a really big spot where they could make something happen. Like after week one, Brian Kelly was a punchline. Oh, you lose to FSU. You know, he's not the guy. Like the accent, we're making fun of the videos. He's in a position now. He could ruin Tennessee's season right now and turn himself into a. That's just a simple. It's fun to make fun of. Oh, definitely. Him. It's just like people liked it. It was easy to make fun of him, and he's actually going to probably make LSU way better. One comment I got on LSU, too. So, Auburn put the new quarterback in who had a big first half. The Auburn game and the Mississippi State game for LSU, the halftime adjustments, they allowed no points in the second half, I believe, in either game. And that gives credit to Matt House, the defensive coordinator. I mean, their coaching staff knows what's up because, like, both games, the first half were struggles, and then they just put the clamps down, and I think you got to give them some credit for that. The other one, too, um, Utah. At least I didn't spill it this time. Sorry. That's good. That's a sturdy bottle, that fireball. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the last time I spilt it everywhere before the axe. Utah minus four and a half going to UCLA. Total is 65. High total. I, UCLA I, I, can't I, stop I like, the, I like the over. 
I like UCLA. I kind of like UCLA. I, I much like UCLA a, a little bit. I'm a Utah too. rider. I like, like UCLA I, as well. It's be a dog fight that goes either way, like a three point game. Chip left some points on the board last week too. I I like what they're doing. DTR, and I'll tell you what, Charbonnet's good. Charbonnet's too. maybe the best running back in the country that nobody is talking about. Like he's great mainstream. Like that game last week, if you had a watch, he's unbelievable. The you watched any I of them? Only who? The kid Charbonnet yeah, from UCLA. Full, full oh, yeah, yeah. He's he's fucking very, unbelievable. Very physical. Very physical. My only pause that they, like, that was such a big, like, Friday night standalone game. It was late, uh, so it's credit, but that was just a huge, huge, huge win where I think Utah has kind of been, like, they lost to Florida, and people have kind of, like, not written them off completely, but have kind of put them to the side a little bit, and they've just been steamrolling everybody. I mean, they just steamrolled Oregon State. Who honestly should have beat USC. So, I don't know. That's another one out west. So, what percentage – I'm high on this team. Ebo, you can weigh in too. What – excuse me. What percentage do you give Washington State to beat USC at USC? Are you talking to me? Yeah, well, uh, just in general, everybody. I mean, I think they have a, a, a solid chance. Their defense is extremely physical, and we saw Oregon State challenge USC with a similar similar setup. So I yeah. thought USC – I think it's a decent chance. I was very – I admit, like – I'll say when I'm right, and I'll say when I'm wrong. I thought USC was in a spot where they'd come out and beat the shit out of Arizona State. You know, they had the ugly win at Oregon State. They're playing a team with a dead, you know, new coach in them. That was a spot where USC should have won by 40 or 50 if they were good, and that was a sorry effort, I thought. I, I'm, I I've been waiting. They're going to get exposed by somebody. They're not that good. Their defense sucks. Sucks. The thing, yeah. They're and just they, flashy. Caleb Williams is good. Ad, they got good receivers. Addison's good. Fancy they football. Showed Mario some, Williams is good. They should have lost to Stanford. I know I was on the right side and bet it, and they scored a million points, but Stanford was Stanford left goal. so much on the Had field. a lot of turnovers, and it was still only a 14-point game. I'm saying Stanford should, nine on the line. Oregon State should have absolutely beat them. I'm telling you, that team, if it, if it gets to where they come to Utah and they're still undefeated, Utah's going to beat the shit out of Here's them. Here's a quick one for you. I'm pretty sure the game – it's at Utah, right, that game? Yes, I'm telling you, Utah is going to – they're going to come to Utah and get their asses kicked. Ebo, you can look this up. I circled it in the summer and texted it to myself. I'm nearly positive that Utah is honoring a dead teammate in that game with, like, decals on the helmet, possibly on the shoes. Look at it. It's already been announced. Utah hosting USC. They lost somebody over the summer. That's a huge, huge emotional game for Utah. So add that into the mix. I think even um, add Ty to- Jordan and Aaron Lowe are being honored on October 15th for USC. I think even add even more. I think Utah, if Utah use, loses at UCLA, that'll make me like them even more in that game. Yeah. I, I think I it would, would set up. Agree. Like if they lose as a road favorite this week and they're back it gets more home, value. That is yeah. a wild move waiting halfway through the season to do that. Like why aren't you doing it the first game? Well, why is the red bandana game not the same game every year also? Yeah. Why do they not work that, that out? That makes sense. It makes no sense either. I don't even know when it is this year. I think it's this week. I was going to say, actually, think it is this week. This week. I think so. It, sh- it should have been last week with the upset. I saw some that on Twitter. I'm pretty sure it's Crazy. this week. So. Did you realize C.J. Stroud has a podcast? Yeah. I know I he, he does a little something I, with us. Uh, I was, was watching because they did a whole thing on, uh, what's his name, Harrison? Uh, Marvin Harrison Jr. He, yeah. With like how he was all dripped out with like Louis, Louis Vuitton. Cleats, yeah. And the Apple and Watch. Apple Watch. People are free, uh, that's sick. Uh, the watch is a bit much, but the 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 shoes are unbelievable. CJ, are people- CJ Stroud drives a Phantom. Yeah, I mean, Roman Catholic education. They make, so, they make so much money. Yeah, uh, Stroud literally makes so much money. He bought he got every single player on the team a five like a six hundred dollar express gift card for suits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. every every player on the team. Marvin Harrison Jr. also is the son of a Hall of Famer who made yeah, millions. That, but yes, he's still, still probably like our certain quarterbacks making millions of dollars. Yeah, yeah. that's crazy. I mean that's even he's what like a, uh, he's like a nice level Drew Timmy, too. Drew Timmy just said that like if he went if he left this year to go play overseas he'd make about five hundred eight hundred thousand and he's staying at Gonzaga because he's gonna make over like millions yeah for sure and real quick Rico didn't wasn't your whole thing about like Kentucky never plays at Gonzaga no they scheduled a home and home and Calipari finagled it to not have it in the kennel but playing at Gonzaga this year. Yes. Oh, okay. I it's thought not, I, no, I was one. I thought that not, was your. It's not. Thing. It's not on Gonzaga's campus. Where is it? Spokane or is it somewhere else? Yeah, it's in Spokane. But just like a bigger it's building, another civic center. Or okay, whatever. It's well, that not, makes sense. It is not when you turn on a Gonzaga home game. It is not at Gonzaga. Okay. And the Kentucky game will be at a bigger spot, I think. Or no, I think it'll still be at Rupp. Yeah, Rupp's that's 18. Where it Rupp's like 18. Still be at Rupp's Rupp. big. So that's where it's like, dude, you're playing a true. That's it is what it is. So, and then the biggest game of the week, uh, college football show going. Nebraska, minus three at Rutgers, plus three. I wish we had TJ in the booth. Chop, chop, right? 
Chop, chop. Drive down to Pennsylvania. Go place that one. All the Rutgers people. It's per- <laughs> works perfect. So the whole crew will be there Friday night. Um, it's probably, I imagine it's going to be a little cold, a little rainy. Like, it's an Blackout, old baby. Is it? You're a Rutgers fan. Wear black. Black. Right, black. Black. Is, how's that going to affect you? I thought you already made a wardrobe. I got a couple wardrobes. All right, you got a couple wardrobe spots. TJ and, hooked me up for the – shout out TJ and the athletic department. They got me. Oh, those guys are good. Those guys are – yeah, I mean, I'm holding. Um – any feel on this one, Mincy? The Nebraska Rutgers. I mean, you can't go against Rutgers on the blackout when the college football shows there on Friday night. Also, we'll say this. The Thursday night, Friday night games are upset magnets for home teams. Mm. A lot of times you got crowds fired up. You know, Nebraska, yeah, they won last week, but they're still a mess. I mean, I think – I know Rutgers hadn't played well the last couple weeks either, but, like, I think that this is a spot where, I mean, if you trust Nebraska laying points on the road, then you you, you know more about them than I do. That's Nebra- right. That's it's sure. one of those Nebraska – on paper, is definitely more talented. Of course. But I think, like, kind of like Mincy said, you're getting, like, you're getting, I think, a Rutgers best effort yeah. this Friday. You're getting, like, a balls to the wall, everything that they can, kitchen sink to win this game. Uh, this one kind of ties into the Big Ten, and then we'll do Ebo stats to know, and then picks. Uh, if you were Paul Crest, would you have taken anything less than what you were owed in that buyout? What ha- what did he end up taking? I'm sorry. He took it was supposed to be 20 million. He took 11 million. The man won 72. Per- I have a blog in the drafts. 72 percent of his games overall. 70 percent in the Big Ten. He was there for seven full seasons. Three first place West uh, finishes. So that means three t- title games. Three times for second. His worst was third. The worst he finished in his side was third. He had four total. 10 win seasons, two of those were 11 win seasons. They were it was he was hitting his 70% clip. Wisconsin, I said it, Wisconsin got as close to a national championship as you can get without winning one for that program. But yo, hey, like would you have taken anything less than the buyout for the 20 million? I'd say fuck talking, you, pay me. You're talking millions. Like, Listen, I, I got you, but like I wouldn't have taken less but the one the counter I'll say too. Everything you said obviously is correct. But the counter to that is they were just as good, if not better, before that. Like it wasn't like he took a team that was so dog he, shit. You're saying no, he and brought them to the, the top. That he basically kept them level. Almost they okay. almost by the end of his tenure, they they were going backwards. They lost their. My thing is, look, what Wisconsin's always been is these unreal offensive linemen in that power running game. In the last couple of years, they've lost that. Exactly. I mean, they, they don't. They they usually don't have great playmakers. The skill guys, you know, sometimes they've had good tight ends. It's gotten even worse though. But they have no playmakers. None. The biggest thing is That's their O line's not do- the O line's not dominating anymore. And if no, they, for sure not. If they don't have that power running game. They're screwed. And you've seen what early, can they do? You've seen it early this year. They had some really good defensive players that went to the league last year. I mean, they're getting smoked on. I mean, we put fifty five on them. You got Illinois putting thirty five on them this week. I mean, they. Their defense is like the defensive line isn't good. The backers aren't good. Like you said, no weapons, no dominant O line. This team's awful. I mean, you can't like they're even even when they're bad, they win like eight games. Like this, like they've fallen off a cliff. My, my question on them: So Jim Leonard, who's all Wisconsin guys, their defensive coordinator, they're going to give him a shot. They probably want him to do pretty well because he's like a natural fit yep. to be the guy. The name I want to bring up though that's very obvious for them is Leipold from Kansas because he coached at Wisconsin Whitewater and won mm. all those national yep. titles. And like I feel like him at Wisconsin would be like kind of perfect. It's interesting. You know what I mean, it's no, I I he agree with you 100. percent He would own the state and recruit. Not that they. Yeah. He and he's already got to own the there. state and recruiting. He's already yeah. agree with you 100. percent Just funny, kind of seeing the brand of football they play at Kansas, and how it's just nothing like the that's way true. they. No, that's but, but I think, but but Wisconsin could use some of that. You can that's you can mix in the good offensive line with. With a stud athletic quarterback, like you can, have, those two things can exist together. There's two ways to skin a cat. To your point too, like Chip at Notre Dame, like I think that would be interesting. Very interesting. And you know the Notre Dame stuffed shirts, people would be like, we can't win with this fucking you know spread offense and all this fancy fancy. Well, guess what? The game's going that way. And he still touch wide receivers. Passing is through the roof. Look Chip's the still like, young enough where he can take that chance. He can make kids. Back. Yeah, yeah. Also, like, correct me if I'm wrong. Who was like the last real dynamic type player like that at quarterback for Notre Dame? They've had good ones, but they haven't had like a, you know what I'm saying? Like I'm a whole. Not a true, like, yeah, like I mean, a, not a, like a gunslinger. A, yeah, I'm not really. Miss, I mean, am I missing? Ron Palace? <laughs> he wasn't, yeah. I, 
No, like you're Brady, right. You know what I'm saying? Brady Quinn, Everett Golston, like, like Kaiser. Like, Kaiser. They had there's Sean names Kaiser. in there who are yeah. okay. Ian Book. Ian Book was a winner in college, but I mean he's not. But he's Ian Book was was fan. vanilla. Like I'm talking about. Like you you talk about how much Reggie Bush would have made. How much would the quarterback of Notre Dame make if he's fucking oh, Montana? Cool. Well, yeah. I mean, Brady Quinn would have made a fortune. I'm saying if he's cool, yeah. he's fast, he can throw. Like I don't know. I'm something Those to throw out there. Frosted tips. So. Yeah, I think Wisconsin, <laughs> Wisconsin shouldn't be afraid of changing their identity. But I, I think kind of, I think they can kind of keep the identity with just like it just evolving. Who do you like? You, said, like you can have a smash mouth football team and still have a quarterback that's incredibly dynamic. Right. Those things like are not, not mutually, mutually exclusive. Like, like they yeah. can what, go together. What team will Matt Rule be coaching next year? Because I think it's no, a- there are options: Nebraska, Auburn. I think Auburn. I was going to say or, Auburn. Will Dion? I think Dion. Uh, I don't. Dion I think so. I, I, I don't think Auburn would take him. No. Well, well, first of all, I think he he would have another run at a uh, NFL job because he never he never had a quarterback. Oh yeah, so. he was kind of like I don't know. I don't know. People honestly, <laughs> in, honestly, no in college I'm, in college, I'm thinking lower. Like people are thought like all, like I think it's not Auburn. I think oh, he should like, go. He should go right. I think back. it's a little below that. Well, Georgia Tech would take him. Tech mate, like tech, tech would be, tech's a good one. Think he, he, Dion Georgia Tech with his Atlanta ties would be unreal. Yeah, but then being the hey, what if he, what if he goes back Dion to where it all started? He just goes right back to Temple. Builds from the builds from the bottom. He could. He very well could. Policiano. It's gotta be honestly. That that was kind of when I had. That's not a terrible thought for honestly. Like I know, I wouldn't be yeah. shocked. I know wouldn't go right down there. He'd go like somewhere else and then there again. You know, I just think I just think people. To I just think people are in this mindset where he's just gonna get like a right. bigger job, and I don't. I don't totally see it. He brought Temple to a top 25 standing. He was great with Baylor. Yeah. He brought Baylor kind of from the shitter back up top. And now they've kept it there. Although he'll be still be on the Panthers. If you were Dion, would you take that or would you wait? I know you don't turn away that, like, power five job because they're not always going to come. I would take it because you could build the Atlanta. Atlanta's got the best hustle of high school football bring, in the like, country. All, he just bring like his son, yeah, bring the hunter kid, uh, and you could recruit that area. Right. I think Prime I think, doesn't leave you, until you, Shador Dave goes to the league anyway. So, I like, think it's I think in Prime still Jackson. I think it's for an uphill. More years. Yeah, I think it's an uphill battle with Georgia Tech, though. He just has, maybe, or maybe, or maybe, or maybe, or maybe, or maybe Penn State absolutely collapses. Franklin's out. Pop roll in. Now, the other one, uh, a, a lot. No, a lot of Auburn people want Dion real bad. There's like a lot of movement there. He also has a weapon in his son being there as well. Like the, they got anywhere. the number one recruit. Yeah, number one recruit. Bring him too. Bring him and they his got a son. few guys they could bring. Like his, and both their sons. His other sons really good too. And and I'm gonna say like 75 percent of that team is all five star transfers. Yeah, and it's mostly like, I know. Georgia kid. I know yeah, he's a, a lot of barstool guys. guy, but I, he's still making a huge splash outside the barstool. No one would ever hear yeah. about Jackson State. Oh no, it's sure. unbelievable. What he's doing for this right now. It's So he's doing yeah. he's doing obviously something amazing. If you get guys to go there, you're gonna you can get anyone to go to Georgia Tech. Yeah. And the, I'm telling you, the Atlanta thing, he was a Falcon. Atlanta's got unreal high school football. I mean, the depth, it's crazy. You know, everybody's pulling out of there. Georgia, Bama, Clemson, Auburn, whatever. He could get people to stay. Hey, you could stay here in Atlanta where you're from. You could start immediately and build it. I mean, yeah. I think it could be something. Attack if you went to it's incredible. It's, a, it's actually incredible what he's doing just from creating a, a culture and, and bringing it basically wherever he, he yeah. has. It, like it could have been Florida State. It could be wherever. Like, I has there anything – like obviously not from a D one AA level to D one, but has there been anything like it? No, oh, and he no. buys. Listen, I was not a Dion. Prime time, baby. I, I mean, was not that's... a Dion like stand. So this isn't me like just blowing him. But like you see the clips. I saw one last week. Uh, he comes in the locker room and he's like, "There is absolutely no reason for you guys to be checking your phones." You know, like the shit he says. You watch all the documentary. Like he's definitely like you said. Got to call him coach. Creating a like culture. Boosh. Yeah. What? Yeah, he's cre- creating a culture for sure. So. Definitely makes sense. Uh, Ebo stats to know. Tulsa is now an NCAA best 16-3 and against the spread on the road since 2019. Oklahoma State is 9-1-1 against the spread in their last 11 conference games. College leans so far early. Mincy, if you had to put one pen to paper right now, which way are you kind of going? Well, like I'm a home underdog guy. We already discussed two of them. I'm going to be on UCLA. I'll be on UCLA, LSU, and Kansas. I'm just firing these home dogs until I start losing, and I'm having a, I'm actually having a way better year with it so far this year. So uh, I'm looking at all those as possible plays. As far as a favorite, I had, I can't go that far yet. I think I'm opposite Yeah, I think I'm leaning TCU. Um, Brandon, uh, I know he's dealing with 
it, the Arkansas fans are going to come for his ass if they pull that upset. Yeah. At this is a, no, and this is a leech. Kind of right when you think leech is good, they lose these games. That's kind of I, I like kind of the, I like Arkansas. That's, that's kind of like the leech thing. No. Nine, nine and a half, right? No, I have eight. Well, oh, it's eight it on the score. I, I it's, so it's just I know it. it way easier to scroll on with. our sports book two days ago was nine and a half. So that it shows because I, I just I looked at it. And I was like nine and a half. Jesus. Um, I'm not shocked that people jumped on that. Louisville minus two and a half. I know uh, no, it's eight, eight and a half. It's eight and a half Ours. now. I know Malisek's going to get mad. Uh, Louis, uh, Virginia's terrible. Yeah, so eight, 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 eight and a half. I keep going back to the well. Game you though. Yeah, Air Force minus ten against Utah State. I watched Utah State get run. They spot. They started up what ten nothing against BYU. I just the new the, they came in with this new yeah, quarterback and the offense played well. I just keep going back. I've, to I've been BYU has been fucking me all year. Besides the Baylor game, they've been fucking me all year. Um, I like I like Wazoo. I think Wazoo is the one. I'm not going to give out my best play. We'll hold that for Pickham. Trying to think of what else stands out. Does Kentucky right the ship against South Carolina minus the ten and a half minutes? Yeah, it's South Carolina. So maybe the Kentucky. I could. I mean, I'm Kentucky or nothing. I think South Carolina is just bad. I just don't think they're very good. And they overachieved the last year and got. They kind of pulled some stuff out. I, Kentucky's good, man. I mean, Kentucky. Let's be real. They probably should have won that game on Saturday. Like Ole Miss got the two turnovers inside the twenty. I don't know. I don't think that was like a horrible loss by Kentucky. I mean, it wasn't like they played crappy. And they left a ton of the kicking game screwed yeah. up. Here's one to put on your radar because the game went berserk last year. Uh, Wake Forest minus 17 against Army. The over is 66 and a half. Mm. Do you remember any of that game? Oh, yeah, it was like 70 yeah, to 50. Nuts. fucking insane. 66 seems a little light. I know Army, You like things have to go perfect like they did last year for Army. Like Army's got a break four or five of those like they did. That's not always the case. And I do think Army's down this year. I don't know. No, but no, I know no, Wake's no, going to score. It's it's just one to keep. No, Army's played in some high like, – like the Coast game is a high-scoring game. They definitely – if you have like a big air raid, they definitely can get exposed. But they'll – if you I, like, go on the other side, obviously, if you can't stop the triple option, I mean, you can go all day. For sure. Uh, Smitty, start us off with picks. Uh, this is the only game uh, all season, possibly the only game in my life that I'm betting against the Philadelphia Phillies. They they were out in the town last night, getting all hopped up, facing Verlander today. They don't want to win and face the Mets. So uh, under, under, Astros minus one and a half. Also, uh, go Mets, go. <coughs> need a win. Let's go. Yeah, need a win, baby. Marty. Uh, I got the Yankees minus one and a half. F also, me taking that method of – I want also want to – a stat of how many times I've been on the Yankees this year. It might be like a hundred and yeah. It might be like a hundred and fifty. Oh. You're also taking Aaron Judge to hit a home run every night. Yes, I am. Because <laughs> he's got to do it soon. If he doesn't, I'm gonna lose it. And, uh, I I loved. I'm gonna be honest. I took Big Ev's pick of the Rockies plus three ten because I liked it a lot. The Rockies won last night, right? No, they lost two one. They but did lose last night. Shit, I baseball. Like, I just see plus three hundred. Dodgers have yeah. nothing to play for. I was like, fuck it. What do you got, F? Yeah, I'm, like I said, I'm on the Rockies. I'm on the uh, the D backs. My favorite play of the day. Yep. Zach Gallon, oh. Army stand up. Yep. And um, oh, how big is that Army? Uh, me <laughs> call, me call. Uh, <laughs> hot ice, hot ice, guys. Army. Dude, Gallon stud. Gallon's going to get paid. absolute stud. Oh, he's good. It's just I don't. <laughs> I think it's oh, a weird. No, I think it's a weird arbitration thing. No, but I mean eventually. Oh, and yeah, also the uh, I want him as a Met bad. Yeah. It wasn't. It was uh, a A's money line uh, plus one twenty five, not Astros. A's money line. Although right. I might add Astros to the card. Also, I see this just now. Smitty, happy birthday! Oh, oh thank you, happy birthday, birthday Smitty. Smitty! Happy birthday! Yeah. Saw that on Twitter. Actually, Fox, it's a rainy Wednesday, Tuesday, yeah. but you know. actually thirteen years younger than Brandon Walker, so I appreciate nice. that. Twins plus one ten, D backs minus one thirteen. Uh, Ev, you're also on. We're on the hit parade, trying to get back. Hit parade, yes. Plus two thirty. TB. Oh no, it got price plus two thirty. <laughs> and my fireball, F it pick of the day, Zach Gallen over six and a half strikeouts. The man can mow him down. Sometimes you got to say F it, say F it with fireball. Zach Gallen over six and a half strikeouts. Mincy close us out. All right, I got the Astros by a run and a half as well. I took the Padres by over the Giants and I I mean I just not, the Mets I know need to win and all but this plus 225 is a huge price when Walker's and they don't have one of their aces on the mound. The game's probably not getting played anyway cuz it's going to rain. Yeah, uh, we didn't talk about that. If the Braves lose tonight, which I think they will because or Dazi, whatever his name is, is kind of trash. The, the, 
the Mets are going to be playing. No, we, we, games no, we were saying that should be holding. No, no off we were saying the, the Mets should purposely not try to play today. They Just wouldn't to make their result. Play three games in a day. They would do the. They'd figure. I know they figure it out, but like no, because if the, if, the, if the Mets like if they get to see what the Braves do tonight, if the Braves it's an advantage, if the Braves win. Then they know they can just they just put out whoever it doesn't exactly. matter. Exactly, but if, the if Braves, they lose, if the then you're lose, like, all right, we're in the shit. The Mets are, are might be like screwing themselves for the wild card. Well, no, but no, but that's why I think they should they should try to not play because then they could watch the Braves tonight and like know where they're at. Because if the Braves just win, then they can be all right, just yeah. put out, just throw. Whoever. I don't think the Braves are winning. <laughs> Call some guys up and throw whoever. <laughs> I said to Big T, I'm like, you could, what you guys are doing is mean. You're playing with your food. He's like, no, we could lose. I'm like, you're full of shit. They, they know what they're doing. <laughs> And it's tough because the the wild card starts Friday, so yeah. if potentially we get to Thursday or even Wednesday night, like, and you have to put in a winner get in game, the pitching it all unfolds. That's baseball. I'm sorry, season. this is a really funny tweet. Will Compton did his like uh, Falcons thing or whatever, and Caleb goes, Calvin really starts gambling, and gets suspended a season. Will Compton starts gambling, gets a fresh shot at the league. <laughs> 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 I hope he gets signed by yeah. so I can talk crap. Good luck. Falcons player. Oh, I love Falcons. The Saints Falcons. Falcons have been great to us. Not that bad. They're going to be better than the fucking Panthers. And I texted him today, so good luck, Will. Yeah, good luck, Will, too. I, want, I need that's, a Falcons uh, player that's talk shit, too. Barce- that- Barcelona minus 130. All right. Ooh. Barcelona minus oh, 130. Uh, I'll play it. I am I am 1-0 on this show. What time is it, at show. 3? Uh, yeah, 3 o'clock. I'm 1-0 right, on this show. Action. Barcelona, 130. What do you mean you're 1-0 on the show? We had that $300,000 parlay that was done before. Well, that's nah, that was that was a radio. That was when it was a radio show. That was when it was a radio show, not a yeah, YouTube yeah, yeah, show. Yeah, exactly. YouTube. Here we are. He's a true. He's a true gambler. He's one and zero on YouTube. Chose. One and zero on YouTube. Tail him. I'm hot. Whale plays. That's uh, eight and two in that parlay. Lost before sunrise. <laughs> Central. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Up next.